station. This is Houston. Andy, are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I'm ready for the event. Isa, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Isa PAO. How can you hear me? Jules, I've got you loud and clear. How do you have me? Very well. Thank you very much, uh, Andy, and good to see you on space. I now introduce you to our Director General, Joseph Ashbacher. Thank you, Jules, and hello, Andy. Actually, we saw each other just a couple of days ago, and I still remember the tour you gave me through the space station. It was very impressive. So thank you, Andy. Nice to see you again, and uh, I'm calling here, as you know, from Sevilla, in the midst of uh, all the ministers and delegates uh, of the Space Summit. We have a very important meeting ahead of us, but before we go into business, I would like to just address you very briefly. You have been at the Space Station uh, in 2015, so this is your second trip. Uh, you are now the, co the commander of the Space Station, which is a, a big honor for you as a person, as an astronaut, but I also take a little bit of uh, pride for ESA, for Europe, uh, to give uh, a European ESA astronaut this honor of uh, being the commander of the Space Station. So, Andy, how do you fulfill this important role of ISS commander? Well, I'm, first of all, very proud to serve as commander of the International Space Station, but I'm equally proud of the uh, growing role and responsibility that Europe and ESA are playing in space. Uh, not just uh, astronauts serving as commanders on board the space station, but also on upcoming uh, missions like Artemis, where ESA is a critical partner to NASA and is delivering the European service module, which, which together with the Orion capsule will enable humans to return uh, to the moon. Uh, in both cases, it's an example of the um, you know, growing roles and responsibilities that Europe is, is ready to as, uh, assume, and it's something that makes me proud. And it all comes back to hard work um, and teamwork. You know, we have a, a great team on board the International Space Station. We are uh, seven astronauts that have trained together, prepared together, um, and that really makes it uh, a smooth uh, daily life on board the space station. And um, as long as everything is going nominally, my role uh, is to sort of stay in the background and just let, let everything uh, uh, flow according to plan. And, and luckily that's uh, possible because we have such a, a great, well-trained crew up here. Yes, thank you so much for this uh, first uh, inspiring answer. And uh, thank you for being with us today. Here's Anna, the chair uh, from Germany for this today's meeting. And I would like um, to um, ask you uh, about our topic. This is also for the summit here important, the question of space and uh, climate change. So what space can contribute to protect our planet, to protect uh, our climate. And um, I would um, ask whether you are also conducting experiments on the ISS, which help our understanding of climate, and if you could say a few words about them. Thank you. Well, we often make the mistake of thinking that space exploration is about everything that we see in the night sky when we look up. But one of the things we realize as astronauts as soon as we launch into space is that space exploration is just about, is just as much about the Earth. Um, because as soon as we launch into space, as soon as we look out the windows, our eyes are automatically drawn to the Earth. And we realize very quickly how unique the Earth is. There is absolutely nothing uh, like the Earth anywhere near us uh, in this vastness of space that surrounds us. Uh, and you very quickly realize that Earth is our home. It's our only home. And we have to protect it because if we damage the Earth, if we make it unlivable, there is no other option for us. This is the only home we have, and it's what we have to uh, protect. You also realize that the Earth is a single planet. Uh, it's a globe that we all share with each other. Um, and you realize that what we do in Europe affects what happens in Asia, Africa, and America, and what 
happens in Asia affects us in Europe. You have to have the global uh, perspective, especially on large scale issues like climate change. And so using space as an vantage point and an op observation uh, point allows us to get that global view to understand uh, the complexities of our planet. And ESA's Earth Observation Program uh, is a great uh, way to enhance our understanding of the Earth. We can also use the ISS uh, as a vantage point, and I'm doing two uh, experiments that hopefully will increase our knowledge about uh, the atmosphere and climate change. I'm studying giant lightning strikes that shoot upwards from the top of thunderclouds out towards space, what are called blue jets and red sprites. And these are gigantic lightning that uh, release a tremendous amount of uh, energy into the atmosphere, but also allow the transport of water vapor and other gases from the troposphere up into the stratosphere. And it's a phenomenon that's not well understood and could play a role in shaping our climate. I'm also taking pictures of the moon in order to understand the amount of sunlight that the Earth reflects into space. And of course, that's a vital parameter because the balance between the amount of sunlight that the Earth absorbs and the amount it reflects back into space is a key parameter in uh, measuring or understanding uh, Earth's climate. And so space really is just as much about uh, understanding our planet as it is about understanding uh, the solar system, uh, the stars, and the universe. Thank you so much for, for this uh, really interesting uh, view on what you're doing right now. And the um, and, and, uh, second topic that we are discussing here in the summit, of course, is the whole question of commercialization of space, of so-called new space. So that would be also of interest uh, to our group here, how you see the question of commercialization at the ISS. Are there also experiments with a commercial background, or how do you see the future development uh, referring to commercialization? Well, we certainly see uh, a bigger and bigger interest uh, from commercial companies in utilizing the International Space Station. Um, and I will also, uh, during this mission, be performing uh, experiments, uh, including commercial experiments like metal 3D printing in space uh, developed by Airbus. Um, it's a very interesting experiment where we will attempt for the first time to print in 3D using metal. Um, and that hopefully will uh, pave the way for uh, in-space manufacturing in the future, um, which will make uh, our ability to produce components uh, in space in the future uh, much more likely. Of course, we still need um, the ability to send material into space, but also to return products uh, back to the Earth. And so I'm very happy to hear that at the Space Summit, you will be discussing uh, a commercial uh, cargo return service. It is uh, something that's very important um, especially also for ESA, I think, in the future, if we want to take part in this new commercial industry that's developing first of and foremost, first and foremost in low Earth orbit, but I think also in cislunar space and uh, around the moon in the not too distant future. Well, thank you, Andy, and uh, this is very important uh, messages coming from space. Uh, what you say about the crew cargo, this will be debated later in the meeting. Uh, but before that, um, this is the second time that you are in space. The last time you flew, of course, in 2015 on a Soyuz uh, capsule, this time on a Crew Dragon of SpaceX. What has changed in between? Well, a lot has changed. Uh, first and foremost, the um, commercial companies that are now taking part in uh, the exploration of space, uh, in particular SpaceX, who are launching you know, up to two times a week uh, and are even uh, preparing the way for our return to the moon. I saw right next to our own launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, I saw SpaceX building their new gigantic launch pad, which will see Starship uh, help us return uh, to the moon. And this is in large part thanks to the decision and investment that NASA made 12, 15 years ago 
to um, to use commercial uh, companies or to enable commercial companies to uh, participate. We also see uh, a, a huge investment from China and India, and uh, I'm very interested uh, or I'm very curious to know how Europe will respond to this. Um, you know, I'm reminded of the fact that 25 years ago, ESA and Europe were debating uh, the construction of the Hermes crewed space vehicle, uh, and I can't help but think what position Europe would be in today if we had developed Hermes. You know, we would have been able to uh, launch astronauts to the International Space Station and to take over in 2011 after the shuttle retired. And perhaps I would have launched on a European vehicle in 2015 instead of a Russian uh, Soyuz uh, spacecraft. And so I'm wondering, 25 years ago, uh, 25 years from now, will we look back on today and say, if only we had made the investments? Or do we have the vision today and the courage today to make the necessary investments that will enable European participation in space uh, in the future? Because space is playing a, a larger and larger and more and more important role in all of our lives. Uh, space plays a huge factor in climate policy, in geopolicy, in security policy, and industrial policy. And so I really hope that you will take the opportunity that the Space Summit offers you to lay out a vision and to make the necessary investments today that will ensure the future for all of Europe um, in the coming decades. Thank you, Andy. Your words are very inspiring. Your presence in space is truly uplifting and uh, reawakens uh, our dreams. Your vision of our planet reminds us of the large responsibility humankind has to protect our fragile home. Thank you, Andy. No, it was a pleasure, and I wish you a great summit. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants from the ESA Summit. For the station, will now resume operational space to ground.